So by now, we know that there have been a number of investigators who have described concepts of the overcoming of gravity via vibration and rotation. Now, though there are different forms of motion, vibration and rotation are not entirely exclusive of each other. When our cell phones vibrate, those vibrations are generated by micromotors with unbalanced weights attached to their shafts. Here we can see acoustic vibrations from a subwoofer causing small, hollow, and solid balls, as well as rings, to slowly rotate. And here we can see the vibrations of small, lightweight particles, some of which temporarily rotate. And still here, scientists have been able to use phase ultrasonic arrays to cause controlled rotation of the suspended particles. John Warrell Keeley's vibratory sympathy concept was to use acoustic vibrations to cause the same type of acoustic mechanical rotation, but on a more molecular level to overcome gravity. Others like Victor Schauberger, John Searle, and Otis Carr have espoused similar ideas but envision potential gravity modification via large-scale mechanical rotation. Otis Carr in particular stated that if an object like a disk were rotated fast enough in relation to the Earth's rotation at the equator, then that motion would begin to cancel out the effect of gravity. Victor Schauberger's repulsing will operate largely via vortex lift, but its rapid spin and also being in the form of a disk will bring in some of Carr's principles as well. Putting these ideas of micro and macro rotation together, we have the concept of being able to induce rapid molecular rotation via acoustic means, which would lead to potential or total neutralization of gravity and perhaps even negative gravity. The same spiral motion that we see on a large scale would also occur with each particle of a particular mass. But the object will only lose weight or levitate if enough of its particles experience these rotations. The more of its particles which can be energized in this way, the greater the reduction of the object's perceived weight. Is this the reason why most UFOs have a disk or saucer shape, which rotates rapidly during flight or hovering? The famous Delphos, Kansas UFO case from no November 2, 1971, describes a six to eight foot diameter hovering UFO as having the sound of a washing machine that is spinning out of balance. Does this rapid spin generate an inertial field which interacts with a gravitational field in a similar way that an electrical current interacts with a magnetic field? There seems to be empirical and mathematical evidence that this is indeed the case. But needless to say, the research continues. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. And as always, stay tuned.